Welcome to another exciting Bible study with Reverend Dr. James A. Duncan, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church. Faith study in the Word is designed to keep you fired up about your walk with the Lord. Fired up about our faith study in the Word with Pastor Duncan, author, teacher, and long-term educator with a burning desire to see every believer live a full life of faith in the redeeming power of God. This can only happen when we develop a hunger and thirst for studying the Word, God's Word. Thanks for joining us in tonight's study. Good evening. We have come to worship the King through the Word of God through Bible study tonight. I want to welcome all of you here. We are so excited uh, about the fact that you've been joining us all of these weeks of this lockdown and shutdown. Aren't you, like me, about ready for things to get back to normal or at least a semblance of the new normal? You hear people talking about it. But I'm so excited because we have been working hard to bring you quality teaching, quality preaching. Many of you have responded, and we're going to continue to do the best we can. Uh, we're trying to upgrade our equipment and make sure the technology that we're doing what we're supposed to do. But it's all about getting the Word of God out and getting in you. Um, tonight's message is a continuation of a series that I have been teaching, and we're going to go into our thought from the sermon on the now. Um, I'm going to get to that as I just expressed one more idea to you tonight. Go share this with somebody. Get on your phone, call, say Bible study is on. Well, if you love the Word of God, you'll know that if you put time in the Word, great things are going to happen. So tell somebody, Bible study is on so they can get it while it's fresh. Of course, you can go to our website and get it later. Uh, you can go to our YouTube site and subscribe. Just continue to watch with us as we continue to bring you quality word. But just continue to watch as we're preparing ourselves. Every day is a new adventure. Every day we're trying to do something else. But right now we want you to concentrate. Grab your Bibles. Go to Matthew chapter 5. And go with me into this exciting worship. I'm starting. Here we are. How many of you have found out or ever found out? that sometimes you do some things that make you not like yourself. I mean, to be honest, there's some things you say and do. I'm asking you to spend this time to make yourself better. These, these teachings that we've been talking about, Jesus Christ in the Sermon on the Mount was trying to raise us up to a place where we could be better believers, but also to walk in the kingdom. And you need to learn to walk in the kingdom. Let me hurt get to teaching. So tonight... As you can see, we're going to go from a thought, Matthew chapter 5, and you can start looking at verse 43. We're going to go with, you can't be a baby forever. Maturity leads to strength. Let's look at our text. First of all, let's talk about it. Babies are cute. How many of y'all know babies are cute? Babies are cuddly. Babies are precious. Babies are warm. They warm your heart. When you think about a nice, you know, beautiful baby, I, I think about our first child. They were all of that. Look how cute they are. Look at those beautiful babies up there. They just make you cry when you see how precious they are. But there is another side to babies. Babies are also, watch this, they want their way. They cry until they get it. They're selfish. And they're so helpless. They want you to do everything for them. And sometimes they show no gratitude. They're honorary. Honorary is when they get in this position. You ever seen a baby doing this? Sometimes babies, the biggest thing about babies, we can't wait till they grow up from pampers to pull-ups. When they get potty trained. From crawling to walking. Look at that. We want them because sometimes babies will throw a temper tantrum on you. Everything I've been talking about, I hope you understand that I'm in Matthew already. Because there are some adults that can fit that same description. The problem is, uh, they, they go from babbling to talking. The big one is we want them to be old enough to know better. And the key is to do better. Let's look at it. What do we mean? 
Here's the good news. They grow up because God designed everything to grow up. This is it. God said everything has to grow up. And with that in mind, the problem is there are people that grow physically, chronologically, but they don't grow emotionally and in their behaviors. And unfortunately, there are some believers who have been saved a long time and you wonder what happened to your blessed life. You wonder what happened to your good life. You wonder why things are no better now that you're in the kingdom of God than it was before you got in the kingdom of God. One of the reasons is maybe you have not grown up. And here is the problem. They have to do all the hard stuff that adults do. The problem is when we grow up, we not only have to be, we can't be waited on, we have to do some things for ourselves. We have to make right decisions. We have to make right judgments. In the kingdom of God, you miss a lot of blessings because you have not grown up. Listen to what God said about being a baby. There's some of you that have been saved for a long time, and you're no better off than you were to. If we were to talk, talk to folks that know you, they would be able to give us and describe to us some of your baby moves, some of the things you do that just says, I just want to be a baby. Jesus is trying to tell us the blessing comes when we grow up. Look at that. You can't be a baby forever. Isn't that a horrible sight? I just put that up here. I'm going to take it down in a minute. But that's what happens when you have a grown person walking around in baby clothes. Let's get to the text. So, this, this, Jesus is saying in these verses, in the Sermon on the Mount, that we got a problem with some saints. The reason you don't have power, the reason you're not able to discern, when this, when this uh, COVID hit, when this virus hit, you should have had enough spiritual strength. The psychiatrists tell us that right now there are a lot of people, if you had any hidden or latent uh, mental problems, they just boss them. But if you got God on your side, you should have already known there is a peace and passive understanding. I got some saints out there now just going, I am so glad I had God because my head was about to spin and turn and go off its axis. But God gave me peace. What am I talking about? Look at this. Hebrews 5, 12 and 13. I want you to know this text because what Jesus is saying is um, at the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that he comes back and teach you what be the first principles, the first things. You've got to learn them all over again. Then he gives us a symbol. He said those Christians who are baby, you need milk, but the world is built for solid food. You gotta know how to pray for yourself. You gotta know how to worship yourself out of some trouble. You gotta know how to find the scripture you need so you can get the enemy off your back. You gotta grow up not because it's that because you want to. You have to grow up because you have to. You're in spiritual warfare. And right now, you're not gonna make it. You're gonna find yourself crippled. You're gonna find yourself lame until you make up your mind. I gotta grow up in some areas. And Jesus said, it's not in the areas of you being, you know, the protected and wanting good things that you have to grow up. You have to grow up in your behavior, your attitude, correcting yourself when you're angry at someone, correcting yourself when you did someone wrong, repenting, recognizing that you can't walk in the kingdom of God if you have a spirit that is about retaliation. Oh, we're going to get into some stuff tonight. Don't go anywhere. You're going to learn how God can shake off some of that darkness out of your life if you understand what it means. God says some of you are like babies. Okay. Um, you're still an infant. You're not acquainted with true righteousness because you won't do the things God said you need to do. Let's look at it. First Peter 2 and 3. You know this text. Uh, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice. All deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander. I wish I could slow down and take each one of those words, but take a look at them for a minute. Rid yourself of all malice. Malice is when you got so much anger and hatred in you, you're planning and plotting ways to get evil. Deceit, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy, a good one. You talk about what other people do, you can point it out quickly, but you never seem to catch it yourself. Wow. Or envy, slander of every kind. Colossians 1.10. So that you may live. God said, this is why you have to grow up. Write this text down. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. Look at that. 
The only way I can please God in every way, and the term bearing fruit means that in my life, once I got saved, God attached some fruit, some other lives that will be changed, some fruit, some growth in me. God attached some areas in me that I would be strong enough to handle whatever the enemy threw at me because I decided to grow up. All I'm asking you to do is take inventory of your bad habits and realize, as you see the words of Jesus Christ, which ones are keeping you from walking in kingdom power, the rule and the reign of God on this earth. You ought to be ruling and reigning over your situation. Let's look at it. God has predestined us. Now, here is why you have to grow up or you're going to hinder your own life. Please pay attention to this, because regardless of what you think, God has predestined us. Look at verse 29 of Romans chapter 8. For those who he foreknew, he foreknew you. The only reason you're saved now, have the covering of God in your life, is because God said, I foreknew you. Come on, you know God rescued us. Many of us sitting here with God will tell you, no, if it had not been for God picking me up, rescuing me out of my life, I would not have found him because I was not looking for him. Watch, he said, he predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Watch this. God predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. Oh my God. He predestined us to be like Jesus. He said... Whatever else you're working toward, I'm going to make sure you grow up because I predestined that you get conformed to my son. So you may continue to say, I've been saved for 20 years, but have you changed? I've been saved for 35 years, but can anybody tell? Is there anything that has been a consistent working in your life? Let's look at it. We just looked last week at phony versus real Christians which looked at saints who walk around willfully sinning, thinking they're still blessed. Uh, we talked about that, that God just laid it out. He said, there are some people you can only know whether you're real if you're making an attempt to do those things. And then Jesus had been teaching us how to walk in the kingdom and how to have kingdom power. Now he's given us one of the most aggressive commands that has ever been uttered against our nature. But it brings us supernatural power. God said, I'm teaching you, if you can move to this height, and you can because you have my spirit, if you move to this height, I'm going to give you a command that's going to take you from natural power to supernatural power. What is it? He said, there is an inheritance as children in his kingdom that we should have. Let's look at it. So, let's read the text. I want you to go with me first to Matthew 5, 38. 42. Then we'll get to verses 43, hopefully by the end of the night. So let's go there. This text says, you have heard that it was said. Many of you have been here for the previous week, week's teaching. So when Jesus said, you have heard, we found out that categorically they had taken the word of God and twisted it so they could work it to mean what they mean instead of the purpose that God had for it. Now here it is. You are going to learn this one. I for an I. Two for a two. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, said Pastor, I'm not believing you, turn to him the other cheek. Let's go for it. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand him over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to, give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Life is not fair. Go with me. This is about, oh, I gotta go back so you can see this. We don't like it. Watch me somebody. Nobody can get away with doing anything to me. Marriages, partnerships, have all been based on this I'm going to get even philosophy. Uh, we have suffered because everyone wants to get even. 
You see, I got the words action junkie down here for me because I like action movies. Everybody knows by now. Do you know when I was doing this lesson, I was convicted because action movies is about getting revenge. You, you took my family, go get them, kill your family, kill everybody else. So I got to watch my heart when I'm watching the movies. But I'm telling you that our whole world is built on revenge and it is infiltrated into our relationships. I don't care how sacred your relationship, you can have a friend for years, let them do something to you. You can have somebody that you love, let them do something to you. You can have someone who wronged you and you can make up your mind, right now, I'm not talking no more. I want my eye for my eye. I want my tooth for my tooth. I want my revenge. You better hear what God says. Revenge and getting even is the main point of our society. Jesus is concerned about his kids, his children, missing the kingdom of God while we try to follow the, pro the policies of society. We, you can't tell Christians from the world when it comes to getting revenge. Uh, everyone who's been in church for a long time will tell you that we have, we have all been guilty of it. Other people have wronged us. And we have said stuff like, I'm not talking to them no more. We have said stuff like, I'm going to get even with them. We have said stuff, and even if we didn't say it, we did it in our heart. Don't turn me off yet. You're going to find out. By thinking and getting even because we feel it is our right to get even. We feel that if someone wrongs me, 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 who are they to do this to me? And we want to get even. Look at what the word says. Romans 12, 19. I want you to write this text down. This is the basis of Jesus' teaching. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. So God is saying, God, I don't understand. You know, if someone does something to me, smack me on the cheek, turn on the cheek, Take my coat, give another coat. What are you saying, God? God is saying, if you want to go from natural to supernatural, don't let offenses ride in your heart. Oh, I just said something, guys. Many of us know this thing, boy, this thing hurt me as I was learning it because here I am, as old as I am, the position that I hold, I, I still spot it many days that I found myself in a position, tell the truth, shame the devil, as old folks said, to wanting revenge. You got to remember that it is hurting your fellowship and your walk with God. Let's look at it. God wants us to waive our rights about getting even. And here's the main reason why. So we can get closer to him. No matter what you do to get even, it will never give you as much satisfaction as spending a day with God. It will never give you as much satisfaction as God's protection over your life. It will never give you as much satisfaction of being able to lay your head down and say, they acted like a fool and I did not. And you will find out that you're going to be the one closer to God. Look what he said. God, now, I'm going to say this quick. What would happen if God got even with us every time we did something? What would happen if every time we did something, God said, I'm going to stop the blessing. I'm going to get even with them. Some people try to make you think that's what God does. What would happen if God said, I'm going to pay you back for not worshiping me. I'm going to pay you back for not honoring me after all I've done for you. What if God acted like we want to act? Watch this. We become more like God and adopt the power of the kingdom when we raise our right to revenge. Please write that down. That's what this is about. Waive your right to revenge because you have too much, too many blessings at stake. You have some real honest stuff riding on you. Um, when you're diagnosed with cancer, when your child is in trouble, when your health is in jeopardy, those revenge and that anger will rot your bones and you will not be able to get in touch with God because your mind has been polluted with revenge instead of saying, Lord, I'd rather have your power than to get even. You're going to watch what the Bible says. This is powerful. We have a tit for tat Christianity. Too often our position is either, watch this because this is where we are, either I get even with you or we are no longer friends. I 
can't stand what you did to me. Therefore, you're not a good person. I sure didn't evaluate whether I was a good person. I just all of a sudden judged you because my feelings were hurt and I want to get revenge. This is the kind of tit for tat thinking that permeates the relationships and this is how it works. Watch this. We often work to keep things as even and equal as possible. Children begin very early to argue when they believe something is not fair. What am I telling you? Friendships, marriages, relationships and ministries in church. I can't have you one up on me. You did something to me, it's my turn to get something from you. Now, if you don't give me something back, you did something to me, then I will not. We got to keep our relationship even. I can't let you be over me. So we fight back and forth in a relationship, and the whole time, both of us are getting meaner and meaner, angrier and angrier. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we're walking away from the Spirit of God. Why are we so saved and can't get along? Why are we so blessed and can't talk to each other? Why is God so good? God is good. But we can't be good. It's because we have an un we didn't, we, we had fallen into the trap that the scribes and Pharisees had told the people in Jesus' time, when Jesus was doing the Sermon on the Mount, this is what he said. If someone hurts us in some way, we are tempted to hurt them back. Suing has gotten out of hand in our society. People will sue you at the drop of a hat. I was shocked as a young pastor when we got sued as a church by a member. And the explanation was, that's what insurance is for. <laughs> So it wasn't, it wasn't, now, we, we've had members that, you know, needed something because they were hurt. We're not talking about that. But to sue us and you're okay is a mentality that you have. Anyway, and we want what we believe is our share. I can't let this moment go by. I don't sue y'all. It's my right. So, so we get that mentality and we miss out on the kingdom of God. We can also be concerned about keeping things so even that we are not beholden to other people. I don't want to owe anybody anything. If we are given a Christmas gift of a certain value, watch this. For instance, we will think through what action or gift would equal this present so we keep things even. Meaning, if I give somebody a gift that costs $20 and I look back and they only gave me a gift that costs $3, I'm upset. I know, not Christians. But it should be the sentiment and not the gift. It could have spent five hours, but all I'm saying is don't get so angry if the gift does not equal your gift. Please hear me. The, 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 what you're building in your spirit is taking you out of the kingdom. You're walking in another kingdom when everything in your life is about revenge. Somebody has to reach out and give some love. Somebody has to stop wanting to be uh, on top to retaliate. Keeping and getting even direct so much of what we do. When we are wrong, our thoughts are focused on how to get even. We want them to pay for what they have done to us. This obsession of getting even separates our hearts from God. Christians today are so consumed with the desire for revenge that is so deep that this passion comes to define their whole purpose in life. Stop, Pastor. I will. Christians are so consumed with the wrongs done to them that they left hanging on this vine the blessing of God so that they can get their piece of the poisonous fruit. I want my revenge. Look, this is Cain and Abel. I want you to notice something about this picture. Cain was so angry at Abel for giving a right sacrifice to God. That he got so worked up that he wanted revenge. See the picture. This is his brother. Can somebody say brother? He grabs a rock. Kills his brother to death. And here is the worst part about it in the scripture. He's not even remorseful. Even 
Evil begets evil and it becomes a perpetual course in our life. Once you start going down an evil path, you will become an evil person and it will make you become and stay evil. This is one of the most difficult and one of the most transparent when it comes to understanding the true heart of the righteous and that's what we strive for. Jesus said, your heart is transparent if your main goal is I'm not going to let anybody make a fool out of me. Ain't nobody taking nothing from me. Nobody's going to get over on me. I'm going to make sure that I stay on top. This is the fifth time we hear Jesus say, you're hurt. But I tell you, we've seen that the heavenly emphasis put on the sixth and seventh and third commandment, sixth, seventh, and third commandment. Watch this. We now see him quote from different places in the law. We've already seen how Jesus goes beyond the practice of the law in his day, instruction to walk in the kingdom. Your righteousness must succeed that of the Pharisees. I'm going to stop. Because all that's saying is you can't sit here oblivious to this teaching because everybody in the church is doing it. Somewhere along the line, everybody's not going to have your pain. Everybody's not going to have your struggle. You know, we live in a day and age, just like the Pharisees, where we have teachers that have twisted the law, where they make you think that prosperity and good fortune is supposed to happen to everybody. We are so much, so much so thinking of how entitled we are that we forget that there is a blessing that rises above the things we get. It's a blessing that comes from knowing God. Is there anybody out there who knows there's a time when I can just sit in a quiet place? I share with you, I was riding in here. And as I was riding in, the peace of God as the sun was shining just was blessing me. And for a moment, I forgot all about the situation that we're living in because I had that moment with God. I will tell you, brothers and sisters, that moment with God is worth any revenge in the world. It's not worth it. If you can get that special moment with God, you don't need revenge. You need God on your side. We also have see how he has gone beyond the Old Testament law in interpretation. This is one of the most radical points in the Sermon on the Mount and puts more emphasis on the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. Let's talk about that. Everybody says spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. So I'm going to talk to you. Is Jesus saying literally, let someone punch me and I don't punch them back? Let someone punch my wife or punch my children. No, see what you have to understand, Jesus is not concerned about defending yourself. He's more talking about when you get to the point that every offense goes so deep in your heart till you're so full of malice that you're going to get eaten. And you will talk about it to anybody who wants to hear. And now we've lost the ability for the Holy Spirit to come in and bless us with the calm and peace that we need. I was watching Star Trek, and one of the traits I like about Mr. Spock is that no matter how bad the situation gets or how bad the trouble is, he watched his mother die, and he did not cry. He stood there, and he was thinking logically, and he was showing no remorse, and no matter how many times the Cleon was attacked, or no matter what was going on, Spock remained even killed. Now, we can't do that. Come on. Um, we got to make sure we understand that that's a fictitious character. But what God is saying is we can learn how to turn things over to him and maintain our walk with him. Maintain a walk of peace. Maintain a walk of joy. And you've heard it said, and many of us who've been angry, anger will hurt you more than it will hurt the person you're angry at when it's time for you to make that next move with God. The next move of God. How do you know God has you here? He's got some big blessings in your life, but he can't give them to you because you're still walking as a baby. These lessons take adults. Adults have to learn when to turn away, when to love through, and get the blessing. Let's look at it. So the letter of the law is what the scribes and Pharisees twisted when Jesus said, come on, you know I didn't mean that. I don't want to be no Christian. It was somebody smack one side of the head. Come on. God didn't mean that. What he meant was don't get to the point that your heart is so far gone. He can't reach you. There's many times we've done stuff, but we have a heart. How many know you can do something to somebody and you have to apologize because the spirit of God is working in your heart. During this virus, we're all stuck in our houses together. And there's a lot of things to argue about. Money is arguing about who's going to put the bread up. Who left stuff out? I cleaned up last time. 
Wish somebody helped me clean this house. We got all kinds of things. All God is saying is don't let it get to the point as you lose your Christianity in a moment of anger that changes your walk and your destiny because now you're a person that says, I'm me. I'm going to get even with you. Do something for me to find out. Watch this. Here. The leaders in Jesus' day had legalized and justified revenge. You have a right to get even. The biblical interpretation, the problem Jesus was correcting is this. The ancient law, when you see this, it's going to blow your mind. It was not even about getting even with somebody. The ancient law that they had twisted around, Jesus said an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, referred to, drum roll, watch this, Exodus 21, 22 to 24. If people are fighting and hit a pregnant woman, please follow this, and she gives birth prematurely, but there is no serious injury. The offender must be fined whatever the woman's husband demands and the court allows. Yes, I'm telling you. The emphasis, the foundation of this principle, and I'm going to read the next scripture, was actually talking about making compensation for a weaker person. This example says a pregnant woman. It's not talking about two people trying to get even one another. It's talking about, and you can understand this because this is heavenly, when you do something offensive to someone who is not in a condition to pay for themselves, someone ought to make sure that they get justice. Look at it. That's why I said the court demands. Look at this. But if there is serious injury, you are to take for a life an eye for an eye, two for two, Hand for hand, foot for foot. I'm going to leave that up. What he was saying comparatively was if there was a loss of finances, if there was a loss of land, whatever it was, it was to be compensated equally. The Pharisees and scribes took this law to justify revenge. Take my hand, I'm going to take your hand. Take my tooth, I'm going to take your tooth. God said that wasn't the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law is let's make sure we protect each other and all of us strive to rise up above that kind of vendetta. You know, you, you're still angry at somebody for something they did in 2018. You're angry at somebody you used to love, you don't even talk to. And the reason is that it did something to you that you can't forgive. And now you feel revenge is, I'm never going to speak to them again. But what have you done with your connection with God? Because one day, you're going to be laying in a hospital room. And you're going to be reaching up to God. Because here's what happens to all of us who take over this revenge attitude. When we get sick, or we get hurt. But we need something. We go to God like we are a little bit right here. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Come see about me. I go to church every Sunday. I do this for you. I usher. God said, but wait a minute. Your heart is so full of evil that all you want to do is retaliate. You're only calling me now because you can't do it yourself. Don't turn me off. Please stay with me. Watch this because it's important. So you can see this law was to affect accidental compensation. The example was a pregnant woman. The ruling was intended to control the limit of revenge. The intent was to not, was to make sure the injured party got something, not just to get even. Are you with me? We have, we, we've heard this so much, we twisted the scripture around. And in church, the reason we don't have a premise to go on and the reason we can just fight and be angry with each other is because we're not following what the Word of God said. The compensation was not to be for the value of the loss. Was to be, excuse me, for the value of the loss. So the wording was eye for an eye. The only time you went further than this if, it, if there was direct murder. And we know we can get into capital punishment later. But what I'm saying to you, and that was intentional murder, what God is telling us in Leviticus, Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, as he has caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him. As he has caused a blemish in someone else, so shall it be done to him. What is God saying? Here's what he's saying. 
One witness shall not rise up. You know, it got so bad in Jesus' time. He said, there's so many liars. There's so many people that I can't trust. He made sure that there were more witnesses than just you that saw it. Because you would make sure you got your revenge. And sometimes we would make up stuff to get it. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity. For if any man sin and any sin that he sinned, at the mouth of two or three witnesses shall it be established. Jesus said, look, we need to get some witnesses because I've seen the anger in people's hearts. I remember one of the most powerful times in my life, and I didn't realize it then, was when I was working for the American Friends Service Committee, and I was working in the, what they call the Maryland, uh, the MAR region, Delaware, New Jersey, Maryland, and I was on the Affirmative Action Committee. It was during the time that Bishop Desmond Tutu was fighting apartheid. And because I worked for the Boss Cultural Center, with the American Friends Service Committee brought Desmond Tutu in, and I was nominated to sit with him and just listen to him. Oh my God, the stuff, I didn't realize it until I was later in school, and basically in grad school, that I realized the opportunity I had sitting and listening to Desmond Tutu talk about his principles and what they were doing for apartheid. And at this time, Nelson Mandela was locked in prison. He had been in prison from 1962 until 1990 for working with the ANC, the African Congress. And what he did by being locked up by the, the illegal apartheid system, when he got out, God made it so he became president. But I'm telling this story to talk to you about when Nelson Mandela got out, when Bishop Tutu was put in front of the Recon uh, Reconciliation Commission, they worked with a principle called Umbutu. Umbutu. You can look it up. It is an African principle of human dignity is based on human dignity. What they decided is we were not going to get even with our oppressors. We were going to treat them as Jesus has treated. Can you hear what I'm saying? If you walk around saying, I know this person did me wrong, but I'm only human when I treat them humanly. So when we treat each other in love, we both rise up to a place in God that we would not be. Next time somebody wrongs you, love them. And later on, you know, I, I remember doing some work and writings on um, Desmond Tutu. I was just fascinated by his philosophy of acceptance and love. And he took it straight, straight out of the word of God. He took it because Jesus is telling us, come on, I didn't make this up. Look at how many times I have forgiven you. I never retaliate against you because of my love. Let's move on. What does Jesus mean? Look at these texts. Don't resist an evil person. That, get this, guys. This is important. When someone slaps you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. What does he mean when he says, use your shirt and then give him your coat also? What does he mean when he said, if someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles? What does he mean he says, give, one, give to one who asks and allow everybody to borrow from you? Here's what he's saying. Go to a place in your spirit where you would rather love than retaliate. Where you would rather love than take revenge. And you will become the blessed person. Oh, I wish I could stop and pray for someone right here. Because the, the, the bountiful blessing of this teaching is understanding what God meant. And what God is telling us, uh, someone's looking, looking, I can see they're saying, what is Mbutu? Look it up. U-N-B-U-T-U. You can look it up. Mbutu. U-N-B-U-N-T-U. Uh, e and it's an African principle of human dignity. And human dignity it came straight out of scripture. But watch this. I'm, I'm talking to some folks. There's only a couple of us in here. Jesus is saying true righteousness is not to be offended by what just happened. That's it. I can't explain any further. How can you say I'm a child of God and this one act take you to a place that you won't even speak to me for the rest of your life? Or, um, I cook dinner for you and you, I ain't hungry. It's a fish inside. And you don't realize your heart is getting blackened. One of us should want to run into a house and make our house full of love and give us a house that has forgiveness and a house that has Jesus' power so when the devil infiltrates, we can touch and agree and get him out of our lives. 
But you can't do it when both of us are walking in darkness. I'm not talking to you, you're not talking to me. And believe it or not, God's not talking to either one of us. Because we got to make sure we know. Look, not that you are to allow someone to strike you. I just told you that. Don't act out of anger or maliciousness and allow God to seek revenge. Here's what God is saying. If you love me and trust me to bless you, love me and trust me not to let you get abused. I won't do it. I will make sure there's a way out. And the more you try to do it yourself, all it's going to do is get you in deeper. Um, he uses each of these examples. Turn your cheek. Don't resist someone who wants to do evil to you. Uh, go two miles with someone. Take, they take a coat, give them a coat. Take a shirt, give them a coat also. He uses all of this just to make, you, just to make sure you understand he wants to see where your heart is. If I can give you a, a biblical example, Stephen actually is a martyr, but he loved God so much that it was Stephen who gave birth to the Apostle Paul. Many of you say, no, Paul was riding down the road to Damascus, he was messing with Christians, and da da da. No, the Bible tells us there was a thought-provoking moment in the book of Acts when Paul was holding the coats. He was still Saul, was holding the coats of all those who were beating Stephen. Look at me. How many times have you been a support? You co-signed an evil action by allowing someone to be abused in your presence, and you never even said anything. All I'm saying, guys, you can't be a baby forever. You gotta grow up. These are principles. God said we gotta quit having churches full of babies that want milk, and nobody wants to live on me. Nobody wants to rise up and say I'm gonna do the hard things of Christ. But you know what we do want? We want the best blessings. But to get the best blessings, we have to make sure that we walk in the principles that lead to the blessings. I wish I could tell you if you don't walk in it, God can't bless you. I can't tell you that, because that would mean that God's a hypocrite. No, God has so much bountiful grace that he keeps blessed. Come on, be honest. You know there's times God has blessed you through some of your messiest messes, and you wonder why God kept loving you. Excuse me, why he still loves you. Can I scratch that out to why he still loves us? <laughs> All of us are in this. All of us have done this. I, I'm, I'm amazed by his love. I am Overblown, I'm blown over by how God keeps us. Some of you sitting there right now know you've had one of those moments I'm talking about where you just felt his arms all around you and you did not deserve it. That's how God does. And he said, wouldn't you want to be the person that gives that kind of love and not just receive it? Look what he said. So, how do real Christians waive their rights for the kingdom? God does not want us to lose it Become obsessed with revenge to the point that our very nature is affected. So here are the things I want you to write down that you can make sure you do not seek. So you can grow up and be a real Christian. Here it is. First, don't seek revenge and retaliation. I'm going to leave it up there. I'm even talking about a husband and wife a mother and child, a father and child, a brother and sister, a friend on friend. If the other person do wrong, does you wrong, if you continue to love, you might not only salvage that relationship, you will build a strength in you that you've never seen. I know it sounds strange. I don't like anybody taking advantage of me. But the reality is, if we walk in this way, we're getting ready for the kingdom. I, I got to take another quick break. I'm not going to get where I want to get. And I know it seems like this, this thing is messing with me because I'm feeling convicted and freed. If you can, I know it's kind of crazy, but I'm feeling convicted and freed because God is showing me a road out and not just telling me how bad I am. But I want to tell you this. If you never thought that the end time was real, living in the days you're living in now ought to tell you something's up. If you never thought Maybe you don't know the book of Revelation. You might not, you know, you've heard Revelation as a scary book. But I will tell you, some of the prophetic things 
in the Bible are coming to pass. Somebody said, oh, that's what you Christians said. Okay, let me see you explain why all the best minds and scientists in the world not only couldn't see this coming, but still have not found a way that there is a cure or even something that can keep it at bay. I will tell you why. Because at the center of the universe is Jesus Christ. God is in control. And when God is in control, your blessing comes from resting in God. So all I'm saying to you is the principles I'm teaching you now are so important because we're getting closer to the end time. Look what he said. So if you want to say, Pastor, how do I take this teaching? Don't seek revenge. It's going to be hard. When your reputation, oh, here's the topic. When your reputation is attacked, don't attack back. Let God fight it. Don't have Facebook wars. Don't go in the tit for tat. If you do, it kills your heart. Retribution, calculating what a person deserves. Don't think in your mind, whatever you say, I don't want them as a friend anymore. You calculated their punishment. Resist getting involved with slandering someone else's name. It's a tough one. Even if you heard, psh, did you hear? You know what I heard? Oh, mm, come here. You ought to hear what they did. If it's something because in your heart you want to get revenge and you slander them so you feel better, even if they deserve it based on your calculations, you're now walking from the kingdom. Repudiation. All that means is finding a way to make the person look bad. I'm going to say something to make them look bad. Too many people love them. Too many people like them. I got to say something to make them look bad. Retort. A retort. Sharp word. Anger for anger. But raise your voice. You raise your voice first. No, I did not. Well, you raised your voice. And now we both screaming at the top of our lungs. Well, I'm sorry, but we're both Christians. So it's Christian screaming. No, not according to Jesus. We have left him. So, now we're on verse 43. So an eye for eye, I just calculated for you so you understood it, that Jesus was talking about revenge. But now I'm even taking you to a crazier place. This goes higher. This is something, when I read this, God said, last time I'm telling you what to do as far as someone did wrong to you, not to retaliate. He said, but now I'm getting ready to show you the best teaching that will take you to the highest place in the kingdom of God. We're going to see some other teaching when we go to chapter 6, but this is the last time Jesus said, you have heard, and now I said it. You don't say that anymore. Understand this. This is a tough one, guys. Get ready. To swallow. I had to swallow this one. Look at it. Go with me to uh, Matthew chapter 43. We're going to read down five verses. Listen to the principles of this text. You have heard that it was said. And get out of the way. Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Makes sense. But I tell you, love your enemy. And pray for those who persecute you. Excuse me, Jesus? Now I understand about not taking revenge. I understand that. But now you tell me, love my enemies. And to pray for them, and they're persecuting me? Let's read on. That you may be children of your Father in heaven. So that conformed to his image so I can walk like Jesus means that I should be living principles that's in my family. He said, I literally become a child of God when I love my enemies and pray for those who persecute me. And I can show you many, many examples where Jesus did just that. And it gave him power. 
If you're interested in revenge, having your own way, being seen as a big man or a big woman, or are you interested in getting closer to God so you can handle whatever spiritual warfare is down the road? Choice is yours. We're not done yet. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will that get you? Are you not even, you're no better than the tax collectors when you love people that love you. Look what he said. And if you greet only your people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect. Here it is again. That word perfect is not perfect. That's where we got the title of this section of the, of the Sermon on the Mount. That word means mature. When are you going to grow up? He said, if you be mature, therefore, as your heavenly father is mature. He said, the height of maturity is to literally love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That goes against everything we learn. That goes against everything in our nature. But look at God said. I got to get into this. Now Jesus turned to the kingdom principle that supports the teaching of giving up your earthly right that we just got been talking about. That teaching is one thing. Love. God said, this cannot be done except through divine love. And we know there's several words for love. I didn't throw it up there because I'm talking to, I know, mature biblical people, uh, biblical students. But we know that there's several types of love. But if you go and you do a word study, he's just saying unconditional agape love is the only thing that can make you do what he said do. And to walk in unconditional agape love makes you just like Christ. Did I say just like Christ? Yes. It puts you in a category where the enemy can't touch you, where you're walking away from your enemies on the earth, where the devil has to run away from you. If you learn some agape love, forgive and love. Now, this, please understand, God never said, let people take advantage of you. Now, make sure I hear this. I hear the Holy Spirit. You de definitely, there's tough love situations. Tough love situations. Make sure that it's tough love and not tough hate. Look what he said. What are you talking about, about principles of the death? death? It is a godly love that Jesus calls us to our enemies. Love makes it possible for us to turn the other cheek. Verse 39. A godly love makes it possible for us to do more than is required. Agape love makes it possible, verse 31, for us to know the second model and to give generously to those who ask. You really haven't lost anything when you do these principles. You really gain because you're not going to be on this earth forever. So any kind of revenge, any kind of retaliation, anything you do to your enemy is all going to be short-lived. But oh, what joy standing before God and you be able to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. Let's look at some of these principles. As, as I told you, this is the last time you hear Jesus say, you have heard what I said. Which indicates again that the scribes and Pharisees had distorted or allowed a worldly interpretation to lead God's people, drawing them further and further from God. Whereas the last time Jesus quoted from the moral law and the civil law, this time he's quoting directly from the Torah, the Jewish Bible. He's now giving scriptures directly to ones that they should understand. Look what he said. Leviticus 19, 18. Do not seek revenge or bear grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. God gave that law in Leviticus 19, 18. Right now. Leviticus 19, 18. God said, don't, bear, don't, don't hate folk, but love them because I'm the Lord. Then he said, the Torah requires Israelites to love their neighbors and to avoid vengeance and grudge bearing. The second scripture is one in the New Testament that Jesus quoted often, which covers, and I love this, Jesus is so dynamic that he had one scripture that covered all the law and the prophets. Here's the one scripture. Matthew 22, 37.
Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these laws. Understand, love the Lord your God. God said, love me first. Love me greater than you love yourself. How do I know that? Look where he put us. He said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, everything within you. He said, the second of that is love your neighbor as you love yourself. So he put your neighbor so you can love them properly. Several assumptions are in this text. Here they are. We have neighbors and friends or people we like. Stop. Quit making divisions in church, hurting people by only loving a few and leaving some out in the cold. And some people that are so charismatic and so ideal and they fit the right mold, everybody loves them. But there's some people sitting in the back of the church in the corner on the fifth view. There's some people crying out, hungering for love. And because there's no one trying to love them, they're hurt and dying right in our churches. Because we're so drawn to our friends. But it's also telling us we do have enemies. <laughs> Everybody has haters, enemies, here, here. Let's talk about those. In verses 38 to 31, Jesus has given us specific illustrations of people who might be our enemies in the text. He says, those who injure us, those who you have heard said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, those who strike us, verse 39, but I tell you, resist an evil person, Turn the other cheek. These are all enemies that we can have that God wants us to love. And the third one is, or those who sue us, verse 40. Those who actually want to see us hurt. They take our shirt. God said, give me a coat. He said, you're going to have some enemies. Next week, we're going to pick up here because you ought to see we're going to get into spiritual warfare. And those who compel us, or those who constantly slander us. Watch this. If anyone forces you to go a mile, go with them too. There's three major enemies that we have Jesus is going to reveal that can ruin our walk, stagger our walk, or hinder our blessings. Amen? If you enjoy this teaching, I am done. If you enjoy this teaching, I want to go further for this time and fast. If you enjoy this teaching tonight, please check like, Share this video with your friends and family. Go to our Facebook page, check like. Go to our YouTube page, subscribe. Just subscribe to our YouTube page. Get others to subscribe. We will bring you quality teaching. And the blessing of God will never, ever, ever depart from those who carry forth the gospel. So take this word and go. I know this has been some tough teaching, but this sermon on the mountain has challenged me. This is the kind of stuff where you want to tell Jesus, there must be a heaven. Because I don't know any of this kind of stuff on earth. I want to thank those of you who have been giving to our ministry. Uh, you know we are a full circle ministry, full service ministry. I share with you, we have our celebrate recovery on Fridays. We have our, we're giving out in our pantries, giving food, we're doing those things. But we also have our members reaching out and helping people even through this time. Um, all I can share with you is tell someone about our services on Sunday morning. Child of Baptist is a kingdom ministry. Doing kingdom building by giving service to God, faithful service, and service to our fellow man. That's our uh, ministry statement, our, our mission statement, is that we make sure that this is about the kingdom of God. You're living in a time now where you need the true unadulterated word. Please go to our site, check out some of our other messages. Stay tuned. Service as the next phase to getting back in the building. And you're going to hear about some reopening news as we hear about it. If you have any needs, please call the church. You and your family. If you receive the Lord, if you were blessed to receive God, you want to, you want to have membership. We actually have virtual membership. Go to our website. Check off. I'd like to be a member. We're going to send you some information that you can be a member of the process we're doing this time. We'll give you your disciple class and anything else you want. We're all in this together. Let me pray for you today. Uh, if you enjoyed this teaching, I want you to tell two or three people around you, or tell them through the week, or first apply it to yourself. You can't be a baby forever. God expects us to grow. 
in our application of the word. Somebody here tonight, I'm never going to stop without giving this altar call. Say this, please. Say, Lord God, I know I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. I believe it in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are Lord because I believe it and confess it. I am saved. Come on, wherever you are, if you prayed that prayer, the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. This is Pastor Duncan saying, uh, don't forget our early morning devotion. We have a word every morning for you. But saying, join us on Sunday, 10 o'clock, for our uh, live broadcast there. And God bless you and your family. Have a great night.